Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith. Welcome to a video about champagne, about actually the vineyards of champagne. So we're going to talk about the topography, the, the layout of the land, uh, the rivers, and also the geology, the soils of this area. Uh, so if you're interested in champagne and you want to know a little bit more about where it comes from, this video is good. It's actually following a rather in-depth qualification called the WSET level four, which is the diploma. So there's a lot of key information here. This follows the syllabus. So if you are studying your diploma, this is very useful for you. If you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. Make sure you click like and you click subscribe. We really want to see those fingers. OK, let's rock and roll talking about all things champagne. Here is the series. So champagne in terms of the introduction and grape growing is an 11 part thriller. And you'll see we're on part five here talking about topography and soils. Now, part four, five and six are available as free content, but all the other parts are only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Lots of exclusive video content there and other wonderful resources to help you with your wine knowledge and of course your examinations if you are taking those. Okay, let's have a look at uh, what Champagne is shaped like in terms of its topography and soil. So first up, we are talking about the altitude and the slope, the aspect. So typically Champagne finds altitudes of not the highest nature, normally about 90 meters up to about 300 meters, because of course we are very northernly in latitude, so we don't need high altitudes here. So generally fairly low altitudes. And of course, to maximize the exposure to the sunlight for better growth of the vine and better ripening, we are talking about predominantly south, east and southeast facing. So south and east and southeast facing slopes in this instance, of course, facing the equator. Um, next up are the slopes. So the slopes themselves are not as dramatic as we might see in other parts of the world, like the Mosul or somewhere like um, other parts of Germany or Cote Roti and so on. The um, average gradient is, is around 12% here, um, but there are certain bits that can get up to sort of 50 or 60. So the average is 12, but we can have some outlying areas. Now, Champagne's gentle sort of undulating uh, terrain, which is kind of moderately steep in places, creates ideal vineyard sites that combine decent drainage, so fairly good drainage of wa waterfall, uh, rainfall rather, and optimum exposure to sunlight. Geology here is rather complex, but it is focused around chalk, a type of limestone. So Champagne's extensive chalk deposits show as outcrops in the vineyard areas, such as the Cote de Blanc, now the slope of whites. It's easy to remember that because it is called the Cote de Blanc due to the geology, plus the fact it only produces Chardonnay. Uh, so the white grape on the white soil here in Champagne. It's also found, though, in other parts, such as the Côte de Cézanne and also Vitry-le-François. So they're the three kind of fa famous parts for it. Let me scribble those down for you, just in case you uh, are struggling with maybe the subtitles, uh, are struggling themselves and not understanding the French when I pronunciate that. So here we go. Those three areas are specifically famous for high outcrops of our chalk-based soils. Uh, you can see that here. Look at that. You've got the topsoil and that wonderful amount of chalk there. That's at Cristal, Louis Roder as Pinot Noir Vineyards near Rams. Um, and you find outcroppings in places like the Cote de Blanc, so you see it with the naked eye, and then that extends down to the Cézanne and also Vitry-le-Francois, but it's buried in areas like Montagne de Rams, like in this picture here, 
um, as you uh, you will find that it has uh, a, a more of a bedrock, not a bedrock, but more of a sort of subsoil uh, status to it. So you'll see it there. So yes, the roots are going to get access to this chalk in uh, these areas as well. Other soil types as well. So we know we've got chalk. Now let me just reiterate where we find this chalk. Uh, and I will reiterate uh, in underlining those areas in green, so you're okay with that. So the Côte de Blanc, of course, the Côte de Cézanne, and Vitry-le-Francois. So really, in the southern section of the main part of Champagne is what we find a lot of this uh, outcropped expression of limestone. And if you walk around the vineyards, you will find it's got kind of a clayish base to it, but you'll see lovely amounts of pebbles and rocks which are almost pure white uh, sitting around this uh, around this landscape now the chalky soils in other parts give way to a greater proportion of marl and marl or marl stone is a combination of limestone and uh, clay um, typically called mudstone but we also have find clays and sands and in, this is in areas like the Valley de la Man. So I'll highlight this here in, in red. Let me just get a slightly thicker red marker here. There you go. So the Valley de la Man towards the western point of the Champagne region. And also the surrounding hills uh, around here in Rams, for example. Now, Marls also are found in the Côte de Bach area. Now, that's actually not identified on this map. This is the area which is about 70 kilometers to the south, past the city of Troyes, uh, and it's the Aube Departement, right in the southern section of Champagne, bordering the likes of Chablis, very close to that area. So you have further Marl in that area. It's actually well known in that area for being Virgilian Marl, um, which formed during the Jurassic period. That's about 145 to 199 million years ago. They are formed with fossilized marine deposits, which are in like a, a small comma shape. Uh, and they are known as Exogyra Virgile, and that's where that Virgilian bit comes from. Now, this marl soil, which is still limestone rich, uh, that does not have the water retention that chalk has, which I'm going to talk through in a little bit more time. Let's go through the chalk capabilities, however. So um, the chalky hillsides to begin with, these are the Chardonnay vines of Champagne en, uh, en, en Rio. Now, the chalky hillsides of Champagne in the northern part of the region have proved the most valuable for growing high quality grapes suitable to make base wines for the traditional method sparkling, uh, sparkling wine. Um, the high chalk content is widely uh, posited to be beneficial in the production of Chardonnay in particular. So uh, Chardonnay shares a special affinity with this chalk, producing really quite high acidic low pH wine from it, which is excellent for long lived base wine. Um, so that's very importantly matched to those, but it's not of course mutually exclusive. Chalk formation. Uh, now the chalk in Champagne consists of calcite granules that are formed from the skeletal plates of marine phyt uh, uh, phytoplankton called on the left hand side there, coccolithophores. I think that's how it's pronounced. And this is characterized by the presence of bem belemnite. Now, belemnite is quite important, the fossils, where marine invertebrates from the Mesozoic era. Now, this is important because depending on where you are within chalk, there are different deposits from different eras. So it's all classified as chalk in certain areas, but you've got the belemnitic area, for example, you've got micraster as well. It is actually widely accepted that the Benhamnite is actually the most desired as it's found on the mid slope of most parts of it. Now, being highly porous chalk, it acts as a natural reservoir holding a capacity of something like 300 to 400 litres of water per cubic metre. And that provides the vines with just enough water in the driest summers. That's quite amazing amount of storage 
in chalk called water. Now, benefits. Now, chalk draws in water through almost like a capillary action. The effort required to tap into this water supply puts the vines under just enough water stress in the growing season to achieve that delicate balance of ripeness, acidity, and berry aroma potential. Uh, this is the chalk seam in the Paul Roger vineyards. Uh, hazards around it, though, of course, it's not all just smelling of roses and wonderful and la -di da There are, of course, some disadvantages. One of the issues with growing vines on chalk is the very high lime content that can cause often uh, problems with chlorosis in the vineyard. The most common root stock to be found in Champagne is 41B, which accounts for about four out of five plantations. This root stock was a cross of the Vitis vinifera chassala with a strain of Vitis berlanderi. It provides really good resistance to this condition of chlorosis. So it actually is a natural, not a natural rootstock, but a developed rootstock to uh, combat the high lime content that we find in the region. Okay, so that covers the topography and soils of this area. The next video actually goes into the subregions found within Champagne and really focusing on the major three and additional two. Uh, it is a free video next, so please do join me for that. If you have any comments or questions or concerns about what you've just heard, please do get in touch. It would be great to hear from you. Perhaps you are a geologist and you can add more uh, bang to the buck for this presentation. Maybe you've been to Champagne. Do you like the Chardonnays that are grown on chalk? Are you a fan of Blanc de Blanc, for example? Always great to hear from you and great to hear your comments. Uh, but until next time, I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you for your time and see you very soon. Goodbye.